thermoplastic olefin bumpers, auto changer, trace control, slip control, traction control, overdrive, 4IS independent suspension, ECS. Bamboozled? Well, so was I. I've just spent a week trying to unravel the Mitsubishi Sigma, possibly the most technologically complicated car I've ever come across. For £26,000, you're lucky to get windows as standard in a BMW. But the Sigma, which has to compete for a slice of the executive action without much in the way of badge prestige, has to rely on something else. To that end, it has a 3-litre, 24-valve V6 engine, which develops 202 brake horsepower. It drives the front wheels through an automatic gearbox, and who said they were labour-saving? This has power and economy ratios, as well as overdrive. And this is by far the best-behaved interior yet to emerge from Japan. The only questionable piece of taste must be this button-backed upholstery. And also, for such a large car, it doesn't feel quite as spacious inside in here as it should. But the toys are great. I've got cruise control, powered seats with memory, air conditioning, and the most fantastically complicated stereo. There's the usual radio and cassette player gubbins, but there's a CD too with its own auto changer in the boot. And if that's not enough, it has a wacky graphic equaliser as well. The end result of all these bits and bobs is a dash that you get the distinct impression would not look all that out of place in the pointy bit of a 747. But there's more to this car than simple creature comforts. A lot more. And it all starts with this. Called electronically controlled suspension, a driver can raise the car, which is useful in conditions like these, or engage sport mode, which drags the car down on its haunches, giving it a taut stance through the bends. It's clever stuff. Although the Sigma does without proper active four-wheel steering, as seen on the Galant, there's what's called passive rear-wheel steer. Mind you, its worth is somewhat negated by vague power steering. But this car's pièce de résistance, what sets it aside from BMWs and Mercs and so on, is its traction control system. Now this is all a bit complicated, so you'll have to bear with me, because it incorporates not only slip control, but also what Mitsubishi are calling trace control. What happens is, one of ten computers on board constantly monitors the amount of steering lock I apply, how much grip is available and how fast I'm going. If it decides I'm going too fast, a large boxing glove springs out of the steering wheel and punches me in the face. No, I'm only kidding. What actually happens is it throttles back. It decides how fast I go around a corner. I don't. Disengage the system and cornering is a wild experience as the tyres scrabble to overcome my youthful exuberance. But when the system is on, even with my foot hard down in second gear, cornering is relaxed and safe, much to the relief of oncoming traffic. It's the same deal when setting off on a slippery surface. With the traction control turned off, there's lots of noise and fuss. But when it's on, after a brief flurry while the computer sorts itself out, the car sets off as though it's on a perfectly dry road. Now all this stuff undoubtedly makes the Sigma a very safe proposition in difficult conditions. But what about the 364 days a year, when it isn't snowy? The engine's pretty good, it pulls with not a hint of roughness, and top speed, for the record, is 140 miles an hour. And yes, it does have a catalytic converter. However, it's not a fun car to drive, not like a BMW anyway. The steering is just too vague, and I'm still not convinced that 200 horsepower and front-wheel drive make desperately happy bedfellows, trace control or no. Two questions remain. Why does it look like an old NSU R080? And who on earth called it Stigma? Sorry, Sigma. Briefly then, the Sigma makes sensible use of its technology. It cruises very well and it comes with a three-year warranty. Countering that, it has a bland appearance. It has no prestige. And the steering is simply much too light. It has a catalytic converter, though, as standard, and therefore has to run on unleaded petrol.